Welcome back to Arco Iris Ranch. My name is Bree, and it is time for our June garden tour. Now, if you're new here, we are gardening in North Texas in zone 8A, and summer is officially here. It is so hot. We've had temperatures in the high 90s, over 100, and we've had humidity up to 95%. Today, the humidity is only 40%, so it's not too terrible, but you can imagine with 95% humidity, it's been pretty rough out here. So the garden is definitely struggling a little bit as I have not been able to come out here and do as much as I would like to have done to the garden. And my plants are definitely showing it. But I wanna go ahead and show you exactly how everything is looking. So let's get started. First bed we're gonna look at is the one that I was standing right in front of. And look how tall this volunteer sunflower is. Now it is looking pretty rough down here on the bottom, but that thing is just humongous. And let me see if I can kind of show y'all. Look how beautiful that flower is absolutely beautiful and there's buds all over it now also in this bed we have some zinnias that I started from seed I'm still not sure what that plant is that's something that I planted in the fall and never grew until the spring so I'm not sure what it is but it's growing and we do have this black creme tomato in the middle now there's I think there's some buds getting ready to start right there but I'm assuming the temperature has something to do with why I'm not getting any flowers on that also in this bed, we just have marigolds around the tomato. We have more zinnias over here and more zinnias in the back over there, but those are looking pretty sad. And then also my habaneros here in the front aren't looking very good. So because I knew those weren't looking very good, I went ahead and I got a couple more habanero plants. There's one there and then there's one over there and those are looking okay, I guess. Right here in the middle is my echinacea. And you can see there are a bunch of spent blooms, but there are new buds coming in as well. We have my sunflowers that I transplanted that I thought were gonna die. And you can see they're looking really, really good. Back here we have a poblano pepper. And then these are the new herbs we added. There's an oregano, there's a dill, and then the parsley's over there on the other side. My zucchini got eaten. But I do have some zinnias in there in the back. And then sadly, my nasturtiums are almost completely dead. My sister and I cannot seem to get nasturtiums to number one, grow more than a few inches tall. And I did actually get one little flower on it, but now they're completely dying. So they do get full sun and it is really, really hot here. Maybe I'm not giving them enough water, but we have been desperately trying to grow nasturtium for years now and no success. So if you have any tips, please leave them down in the comments. We would both really like to grow those in our garden, so please help us out. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into this next bed, which I also have a sunflower. This one is not as tall. This is one of the ones that was actually planted over like up next to the fence. It was self-seeded, but when we put the rock in, we wanted to go ahead and move it. When I first moved it, I thought it was a goner. It looked so sad. My sister was like, well, just go ahead and water it and see what happens. I'm so glad I did because we now have some flowers on it and look how beautiful they are. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now that's the second flower to open. The first flower that opened kind of opened a little funky, it's still beautiful, but then you can see there are just buds all over it. So happy to have that. Underneath here, this is where we planted the sweet peas. You can see they are slowly but surely coming up. I really thought they would grow a little bit faster, but that's okay. And then these right here are my peanuts. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but there were actually some blooms on it. So that was pretty exciting. Here we have our zinnias. Most of them germinated. Well, actually now that I'm looking at it, about half of them germinated. So fingers crossed those ones that did germinate survive here we have I think this is the banana rama pepper we do have a few of my Swiss chard growing in the front here not very many this is my 
baby bell pepper. And then we have my sage right here. This side, germination from the zinnia is not very good. I'm thinking it was a watering issue. And then that is my, what is that? Salvia? Or maybe my basil. I'll put it up on the screen because I forgot what that's called. Actually, I think it's the Siam Queen. But that one's doing really, really good. We have been getting quite a bit of rain and I was unfortunately kind of relying on that to do a really good water on these beds. So that's why some of them aren't doing as good as they should be because I should have been coming out here and watering them. But it's too late. All I can do now is hope that they make it and just continue watering them. So now let's go ahead and look at my pepper bed. That's probably the bed that's doing the best. And I've actually already harvested a few and there's actually still a few on there that I can show y'all. Now, the ones I started from seed aren't doing the best, but let me go ahead and show y'all. As you can see, we have lots of color on these marigolds. They are so pretty and I wanted to show y'all. So this is one plant right here and we have different colored marigolds on this one plant. This one right here, you can see. This one has yellow and orange on it. Same thing with this one right here. I didn't know that different colors would grow on one plant. Most of the peppers in this bed are jalapenos. You can see these three in the front are the ones that I started from seed. That one started doing okay, but these two are really, really stunted. And then the next nine jalapenos were ones I bought from a store. And these are ones I've actually already harvested on. And I can show you, here's a couple peppers right here that are growing on it. There's another one down here. And then the ones in the back here are my poblano peppers. Now there's no peppers actually growing on these yet, but there are lots of buds on them. So I expect to start seeing some peppers soon on those. Over here in my tomato bed, I am struggling with my tomatoes. As you can see, there's not very many leaves on them. You can kind of see it better in my slicer tomatoes but no leaves are growing i don't understand but i mean i do have tomatoes on them you can see there's a cluster right there some up there i even have one that's starting to blush right there and then this one has several on it and then we just have zinnias and marigolds in the middle not really looking the best then we have, these are the Black Prince, I believe is what they're called. And you can see I do have fruit on them and I do have flower clusters up here, but the leaves aren't growing. So everyone else's tomatoes are like really, really bushy and mine aren't. Now, let me show you. I did have a couple of hornworms that did eat some of my stuff, but I took those off. You can see those leaves down there have hornworm damage as well. But then over here on this one, I do have a couple that are blushing right here. But I don't understand what's going on. I see other people that are gardening in my area or at least close to me and their tomato plants have tons of foliage on it and mine don't have hardly any. And I'm not pruning. I was pruning the suckers off, but even at this point I've stopped doing that because I don't know what's going on. So. If you have any advice on that, please let me know down in the comments because I have not had this issue before and I've grown tomatoes every year since I've started gardening. So this is the first, but I am happy to see that there is fruit on there. So fingers crossed, hopefully they turn out and they taste good. If you haven't been with me very long, I don't like tomatoes. I have yet to find one that I've actually enjoyed. So in the previous years, I've grown a whole bunch of different kinds and I haven't liked any of them. So I am still on the hunt to find one that I actually like that I can eat and enjoy. Now my husband loves them, so the other ones haven't gone to waste. He's been enjoying them, but I wanna find a tomato that I actually like. So the Black Prince had really good reviews and I think it was awarded best tomato of the year for several years, now a few years ago, but still. So I figured I would go ahead and just focus on that one. And then the Roma tomatoes I'm gonna to be using to make salsa and stuff like that hoping I get enough. I'm starting to think maybe three plants wasn't enough if I'm planning on getting a bunch to do some canning. I might have to start planting more of those in future years, but we'll see how many I get from three. So the only other bed inside the little garden fence 
is my strawberry bed and I have been eating tons of fresh strawberries. They have been so delicious and I've actually been enjoying some blueberries too. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. First thing you'll notice is my dill plant has gotten so tall and look at these flowers. Aren't those absolutely beautiful? But you can see I do need to stake that up because it has started to fall over pretty good. My strawberry plants are really nice and full and you can see they are starting to send out runners right here. So I've been really happy with those. I'm waiting for these blueberries to turn. I've eaten blueberries off of that plant over there. This is my Aqualon blueberries and that pepper that baby girl planted is actually doing really good. So over here, this is my tipped blue. This one is starting to look pretty rough and there are no flowers on this. I think this is a later fruiting variety. So you can see my fig bush is looking really nice here. No figs on it yet, but it's growing really, really good. And then this one is my Vernon blueberry bush that I've actually already eaten blueberries off of. Looks like the birds beat me to those ones right there. Being able to come out here and eat fresh strawberries and fresh blueberries has been a real treat. I've really enjoyed it and so have my kiddos. Now that's it inside the garden fence. Now getting ready to go through this trellis here, I want to show you what I was not expecting. This here behind me is my passion vine. I thought the passion vine was a complete goner after this winter. It just turns out it doesn't start coming back until really late in the season. So that's the one on this side and the one on the other side is coming back too. So I am so excited. Like I said, I thought those were complete goners. And so I had actually planted some beans on the trellis and the beans got eaten on one side, but I do have one that's growing on the left side. Let me show you. This right here is my red noodle bean and it's starting to grow. So it's about up to the first level right there. So that's really, really exciting. I'll go through these beds pretty quickly, but we have some Dusty Miller, we have some Salvia, we have some Lantana down there, we have a mum down there going crazy. This is my Hibiscus. This is amazing. This one basically dies back completely in the fall or in the winter, and then it grows and it just explodes. Now you can see back there, we do have some blooms, but they're not open in the evening, so you won't be able to see those. But you can see these are covered in buds and grasshoppers. There's a little grasshopper right there. But buds all over this plant. So those Dusty Millers are getting a little bit of shade. Right now they're in the sun, but they get shaded most of the day. And then we have some Snapdragons. We have Rosa Sharon, my Guara. I think I'm going to pull that plant out. It's not doing too good. And then we have more Dusty Miller. We have some Angelonia down there, blue bonnets that's gone to seed. We have a lily, some calla lilies, and we have some lantana and iris. I absolutely love how the flower beds have turned out. I actually enjoy this side even more. This is the side that I completely packed and I do see some things are suffering. I need to probably get out here and water it a little bit more, but let's go ahead and look what's on this side. So we have some salvia, dusty miller, this is the Pavonia Rock Rose that I absolutely love. More grasshoppers there. These flowers are also closed in the evening. My bee balm, I'll put a picture on the screen. I know that looks really ugly right now, but that was beautiful. We have lamb's ear, dusty miller, cow lilies. My ornamental onions have not started sending up bloom stalks yet, but I can't wait to see those. And then this yarrow, look how beautiful that is. It comes out really really first at first it comes out really really dark and then it fades lighter and then it goes even lighter but all stages are beautiful and we have more dusty miller and this hibiscus head over heels is getting devoured by grasshoppers unfortunately but it is also covered in buds we can actually see another grasshopper but we can see some color peeking through right there well, this thing's gonna be exploding with color very, very soon. I've only been outside for a little bit to do this garden tour and I am already sweating really, really bad. Humidity, even 40% is rough. All of my irises, excuse the hose, 
all of my irises are doing good, but they're not gonna be blooming probably at all the rest of the year. Some of them may bloom in the fall, but I don't think any of my varieties actually do. So we'll see, but they will bloom next spring and be beautiful. So now we're over here on the other side. We have my peach tree behind me. Oh, let me show y'all. A creepy crawly right there. But on my peach tree, we have lots of peaches down in here. And the tree is just covered in them. But they're not ready to be eaten just yet. Behind this, we have the beautiful Beverly Rose. I absolutely love this light pink color and it has just been blooming like crazy. And you can see there's tons still getting ready to bloom as well. Beautiful, beautiful rose. Down here we have my lemon balm that has grown pretty nicely. Some beautiful calla lilies. Surprisingly, I still have some pansies and violas, but you can see they are looking pretty rough. So they're going to be pulled out soon. This is my chives that has absolutely exploded and I just noticed you might actually have a blossom soon. This is my peony if you can see here. That's what it always does. So with my peony every year I think it's not going to come back and all of a sudden it grows, comes back, gets about, I don't know, less than a foot tall and then starts getting crispy and dying like that. So I don't know what's going on. So, I mean, it keeps coming back, but I'm not ever gonna see flowers on it if it doesn't grow more than a foot tall. So, it's sad, but fingers crossed, one year it'll actually do something for me. My husband is mowing, I apologize. You can probably see him right there. But he's getting closer to me, so it might be getting louder. Over here, we have some delphinium that is coming back. It's already bloomed, but it's set it out all this new growth and looking really, really pretty. These flowers are my pincushion flowers and they are just beautiful. And there's so many flowers on them and when the flowers get done blooming, they still have these really, really interesting pods on them. My hyssop has come back and looking really, really nice. Gotten really tall. And then unfortunately the dahlias that I transplanted, they're done. And we have quite a few other things here. This is the forget-me-nots, I believe. More canna lilies. This is my lemon thyme. This one right here is beautiful, but I always forget, forget what it's called. Pink Moody Blues Speedwell. Really, really pretty. You can see these sad pansies and violas getting ready to get ripped out. Lantana starting to grow nicely. We have this variegated oregano or variegated thyme, I don't remember. And we have salvia here. The beauty berry, you can see, is about to have really pretty flowers on it. Can't wait to see those. I thought this had died. And then we have the canna lilies over here. I don't know if these are seed pods. I think they are. I'm gonna have to research that a little bit more. This is what happened after the seed bloomed, after the flower bloomed. I think those are seeds in there. But it has definitely grown a little bit for sure. This is such a miserable time of the year, unfortunately, but I definitely wanted to show y'all what everything is looking like in this miserable time. Now, I know most of these things will survive the heat. They may struggle, but they will survive and then Oh, and then hopefully in the fall, I'll still be able to show you some really pretty things. So now we're over here behind the house by the dahlia beds. I have not been getting out here and weeding, so ignore all that. But these are the beds that I recently harvested all the onions out of. So once the onions are pulled, all we have left are strawberries in this bed and in this bed. My daughter's bed has a bunch of wildflowers growing. Oh, look at this. I'm not sure what that is, but that is absolutely beautiful. And then we also have some really pretty zinnias. A couple different colors here. Really, really nice. And then these beds, not much. 
I think that might be a Cosmo right there. And then we got the Glads that I planted. And then I think these are weeds. That might be a Cosmo back there, I'm not sure. And then we got something growing right there, but that might also be a weed. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I planted a ton of seeds in those three beds and nothing's coming up. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's where the beds are located. You can see it's in the evening and those are the only things that are still in the sun right now. So that gets, you know, a lot of really hot heat for most of the day. So I don't know if that's the issue or if it was lack of watering or if it's the soil or a mixture of all three of the things. But I have been trying to get things to grow in those three beds and have been very unsuccessful. The only things that seem to be doing great over there are the irises. Now, I think I only got, yeah, only one of those irises actually bloomed this spring. But, hey, I got flowers. So, yeah, I don't know. The area is definitely not turning out like I pictured it at all whatsoever. But it's okay. It's still a work in progress. But my garden is just absolutely beautiful and i am so happy with how everything is turning out yes there are things struggling i think most things are going to struggle when it's over 100 degrees so fingers crossed everything survives and like i said any of the things that i had issues with if you know what might help me please let me know down in the comments you know i don't know everything of course so i definitely would appreciate y'all's help but that's it i'm gonna go ahead and get back inside try to cool off thank y'all so much for watching we will see y'all in the next one